are living we are living in an era of constant discontinuity. Since the beginning of this century, we have seen disruption hitting every economy, every single industry, and shaking at the core many companies. Now, if you are not proactively riding over the, rail, uh, over the wave of, of technology disruption, which is one of the global forces that is really bringing change across the board, then at some point you will be forced to react to it. What we are seeing today is that technology disruption is touching every facet of our lives. It is changing the way we live, hopefully, with the new technology, we can improve the quality of our life. It is changing the way we work, where we work, how we work, even our workplace is being changed, the design of the workplace. It is also changing the way we do business, how we sell, how we buy, how we make payments, how we market our products, and also how we interact with our customers. Now, when you talk about technology disruption, you have first to be aware that it is coming. It is already here. And the message tonight is, do we have the plans to actually ensure that we don't get left behind and become victims of this disruption? Now, you can argue that disruption, technology disruption has been around for a long time. Yeah, industrial revolution was there. Yes, it disrupted the transportation industry, the printing industry, and many other industries. But what's the difference between what we, what we witness in the industrial revolution and today? First of all, is that we are seeing that the clock speed of change is much, much faster. We are moving from a linear world into an exponential world. First, we, we note that the speed of, speed of innovation is much faster. Now we're talking about the accelerating return uh, of technology. We are also seeing that the speed to acquire market share, the speed to actually take up a business is increasing exponentially. I'll give you an example. Facebook took three and a half years to acquire 50 million customers. WhatsApp took 15 months. Angry Birds took 15 days. Never heard of before. What does that mean? It means that the rules of the game are changing. Now, let's talk about some of the industries that are being disrupted. I'll give, just give you a few examples so that we understand the context. Maybe some of you are actually in those industries. Let's look at the banking industry to start with. By 2025, two billion people will have their first banking, banking experience on their smartphone. 80% of these people will never walk in a bank branch. What will happen to the banking structure? What will happen to branches? It is also estimated that the fintech companies at some point will be able to compete with banks. Today, fintech has been focusing primarily on payments, but the time that they are able to do lending, then what will happen? Peer-to-peer -peer lending is already here. Crowdfunding is already here. This really will disrupt the banking sector big time. The second industry that is, being, that is uh, seeing a lot of uh, change is the education industry. You've all heard about the MOOC platform. This is the open free online courses that you are able to get. EDX has actually worked and founded a, a partnership between MIT and Harvard. And today they are able to provide free courses online. You only pay if you want to be certified in those topics. And you pay $50, $100. Now, many years ago, we were talking about $1,000 to do these courses. Now, EDX have 7 million students. They've only been around four years. What will happen tomorrow to the brick and mortar universities? Where will people be educated? Now, these MOOC have actually shown that you can add a student at zero marginal cost. You can also change the experience of the learning. You can customize it to, to the person actually doing the course. Now, if we are in the industry of education, then we need to think very hard where we will be in five years' time, in 10 years' time. The next one is the healthcare industry. Now, the healthcare industry has been pretty dormant as far as technology adoption has been over the last, over the last few decades. But at the moment, it's being seriously disrupted by technology. One simple example, which many of you are very accustomed to, is the wearable, the wristband that you wear. Now, this is very attractive. It is affordable. About 100 million people are actually going to wear it in the next two years across the world. What this is doing is actually changing the way we manage our own health. Very often, the problem with doctors today is that you go and see them after you get sick. Now, this wearable will enable you to get data on your health conditions. You can track your heart rate, you can track your pace, you can track a lot of data, a lot of metrics on your wellness, on your health conditions, and it can even predict whether you're going to get a heart attack. 
When you go to a doctor, he can examine you. He will do, give you only one data point at this on that day. Whereas your wearable is going to give you constant data throughout the year. What, how is this going to, to, to change the healthcare industry? You have your doctor assistant in your pocket every day. Now, when all of this is happening, what does that mean to you and me? It means that tomorrow we will have to manage the, our businesses very differently. The one thing that we need to do is we need to question the leadership. The leadership of tomorrow is going to be very different to the leadership of yesterday. First thing is that we need to understand that a lot of things that we have learned over the years will not work in the future. We have to unlearn a lot of things. Very often we come and say, oh, I've got 30 years experience in this domain, I've got 40 years experience in this industry. This might be your biggest liability. It's no longer an advantage because having experience means you're, you're an expert of the past. What you need to be is how do you anticipate the future? So boards need to have the digital natives sitting on their board because that's the way they're going to see things differently. Now, I know a lot of times companies are very difficult and very slow to change. But these are the things that, is, that we have to look very carefully about our own industry, our own company. How we bring those new ways of thinking, new ways of, of doing things, ask people to challenge what we do instead of going the way we have been going uh, in the last 10 years, expecting this will work in the next 10 years. It will not. The second thing is that we need to think exponential. As I have given you some examples of the speed it takes to acquire customers. You have to think exponential opportunity versus incremental outcome. No longer are the days where you are struggling just to have a 3% or 6% growth. In this industry, in this ecosystem that we have, you can actually grow 30, 40, 50, 100% a year. We have a lot of examples around us. So the mindset has to change. We have to have a leapfrogging mindset, looking at what can I do radically different that will cause me to leap forward and be ahead of the game. The other thing that we need to think about is the ecosystem. Now, if you, you have heard of, of Amazon. You can argue whether Amazon is a retailer or Amazon is a technology company. In fact, in fact Amazon is an ecosystem. Amazon is trying to get into your lives by building habit-forming touch points with you so that you can be dependent on all that they have to offer. This, this week, we have seen the results of, of Walmart coming out, going down, and Amazon is one of their, th of, of their, of their closest threat. But what we, we're saying is that with this ecosystem, you have to look at your own business and think, not I'm going to do it all myself. I have to look at what can I bring to my ecosystem, partner with people that can actually help you. Because you can't be expert in everything. So this challenged the way how we are going to collaborate in the future. You have to think also about how you bring in startups in your business. A lot of companies are struggling while there are some startups down the road probably having the solution to your problem. Keep your eyes open. Go around Mauritius, go around the world, and find one startup who has the idea that is going to fix your problem and bring them into, into your organization. I mean, these are some of the things that we need to think about. There's cannibalization. They say that if you don't cannibalize yourself, somebody else will. What does that mean? It means that a lot of companies have had their businesses a long time, and because they have been around for so many years, they are very difficult to change. This is what I call organizational inertia. It's easier to change a startup than to change a 100,000 people company. And the, the problem is that today you have to let go of benefits of today so that you can be prosperous in the future. You have to sacrifice. You have to set up a two-speed organization where you have your heritage organization and also your startup, your digitally, digitally uh, disruptive company at the same time. And, 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 and over time, hopefully, the one will, will over, uh, over, overtake the other. Now, a lot of companies are just thinking the world will need my product. Guess what? One day you may discover that they don't need your product. And by the time you understand this, there's no funds to actually re-engineer your business. So this is what we're talking about, this dis digital disruption. So we have to get ready for it. Like I said, this may scare some people, and I hope that it does scare some of us, some of us so that we, when we go back to our office on Monday morning, we're thinking, oh, how can I, can I do my business differently? How can I do things very differently to what I've been doing so far? 
But this is also great news, great opportunities for young people here. Because what it means is that today, the market has exploded. I mean, if you look at mobile uh, devices, there will be 4 billion of those connected to the ecosystem in 2020. It means that you can, have, you can have access to 4 billion customers to your products. Now, cloud is also bringing a lot of change uh, and opportunity. Mauritius, one of our, our biggest disadvantage here is that when we have a product, if we want to deploy this globally, it costs a lot of money because all the markets are very far from us. Now, with cloud, you can deploy your product in every country, in every geography, just by staying here. Now, these are all opportunities, yeah? There's a lot of unemployment among the youth, but there's also great opportunity. And I hope that you think about how this digital disruption is bringing hope to the newer and smaller organization. And today, you can be very small. Many of these large companies that you hear a lot on, on, on television today did not exist about 10 years ago. And today, they have the, probably the biggest market cap in the world. Why? Because of this technology disruption enabling them to do things much, much faster on a bigger scale. Now, I'll just conclude by, by uh, mentioning one of the, of, of, of the quote from, from uh, Jeff Bezos, who is the CEO of Amazon. He was asked the question that, what do you think about competition from the giants? And his re reply was, frankly, I'm not concerned about the giants. I'm concerned about two guys in the garage. Now, these 40,000 unemployed merchants can be those two guys in the garage that can really disrupt the big boys. Thank you.